Hey everyone, this is Dave Cooper and we are in Austin, Texas with the Housing Innovation Alliance and right now we are sitting in Community First Village and with me is Dimitri from Icon, Icon. 3D Printing, right? So yes, I love it. So Dimitri, I think which is really going to be fun about this conversation is we have some stuff in common. You were a military guy at one point, right? That's right. Uh, well, always military, I should say. <laughs> but you know, what you're doing is absolutely incredible right as a company and 3d printing so i really want to walk through you know the, the life cycle of, of what your your vision is as, as a company uh the technology that you're you're implementing to, to build a beautiful structure as sitting behind us right here uh and really really where we're headed so if you could just take a moment why don't you give everybody your background and, and how you got to where you are yeah absolutely uh, so my name is dimitri julius i'm the vice president of operations at icon for those of you who are not aware, uh, Icon is a uh, 3D printing technology company. Um, we utilize uh, robotics, uh, advanced materials, um, in our cementitious material, um, and, uh, and all of our tech uh, to basically make as big of a difference as we possibly can um, in a paradigm shift uh, in the global housing crisis. So we're trying to scale um, large-scale robots so we can build as many houses as possible. Yeah, I, I love it. So there, there's a lot of things that, that are going into this outside of just using concrete and 3D printing. There's the whole technology side that's happening with what you're doing to make the ease of application for builders that are out there and for the process to really use this efficiently and effectively. Is that accurate? And that's, that's, you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So why, why don't we talk a little bit about what is the vision of ICON right now? You know, where you started and, and kind of where you're at right now. Yeah, so ICON started a, approximately two years ago um, with, the, with the grand idea that um, housing as it existed today needed a paradigm shift. We were looking for ways uh, to, to create innovation in such a way uh, that allowed for us to scale houses more affordably, yeah. more resiliently, um, and more beautiful um, than they currently exist. And so um, the co-founders, uh, Jason Ballard, um, our chief technology officer, Alex LaRue, um, and our chairman, Evan Loomis, um, founded a company uh, to do so. Uh, so we started with that seed round, um, got a $9 million seed round to, to build a prototype and effectively uh, partnered with uh, New Story, uh, which is a, a philanthropic organization okay. that builds uh, social housing all throughout the world, uh, to go deliver a proof of concept, which was uh, to us one of the most magnificent things we've been able to participate right, in, right. is uh, the world's first 3D printed neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and from there, what we've realized is uh, this technology has legs in all different segments of housing. So not just affordable housing or tiny houses. Uh, there's a real opportunity for us uh, to make housing more affordable right down the market, middle of the market, um, and also to do some things on, on, on either side of the bridges. And so that's what we're looking to do is to leverage this agnostic technology to build uh, beautiful, resilient structures, uh, regardless of what it is that you're trying to build. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, so before we jump into to everything here, why don't we talk about where we're sitting? Let's, let's paint the picture picture of you know community first village why you know icon has a house here absolutely so community first village is right here in austin texas near and dear to our heart um, uh, the founding group with uh, alan graham and his team have effectively built a master plan community for individuals who were experiencing homelessness or were home insecure and have found literally a community here in the village and so uh, what they've done is partnered with a bunch of different builders icon is one of many um, to create multiple different housing pods all throughout the space um, and then fostered uh, programming for uh, community and, um, and building jobs and things of that nature to effectively create a space that's uh, conducive for everybody to, uh, to live as beautifully as they'd like to. And so yeah. we're, we're so incredibly right. proud to be a part of everything that's going on out For here. sure. I mean, this place is awesome. Yeah, yeah it's it really, really cool. It really is awesome. Um, we're, hopefully, you know, you guys can send us some, some B-roll for this because really, I think the world needs to see what's happening here. It's an amazing, amazing thing that's going on. Yeah, so I'm, I'm from Southern California um, and I'm living right here in Austin, Texas. Uh, homelessness is something that, that you see kind of, it's, it's unavoidable. And it's really sad that our, you know, our brothers and sisters are experiencing this level of pain yeah. um, and, and don't have places to live, to call home. And so uh, to kind of see someone doing it well and seeing it work and have it be right in your backyard is inspiring and, and, and makes us want to do better. Yeah, 100%. Well, you guys are on the cutting edge of a lot of things. So this is just one of them. And I think it's going to translate very well, you know, to other communities, hopefully moving forward. So, all right, let's hop into this a little bit. Let's, let's talk about it. Here I am, I'm a developer. You know, I want to maybe use your product. You know, I, I was on your site. It says you, you have you know vertically integrated technology. Talk me through what is the process to design and build something with a 3D printer. 
Yeah, so one of the one of the most interesting things about the way that houses get built now. So I, I worked at another startup of called Treehouse that was founded by Jason Ballard with the with the concept that you can take bits and pieces of things about the housing experience and improve them. So um, you know, my house was built without solar panels. I'd like to go ahead and bolt those on, or right. I'd really like to become more sustainable so I can go purchase a water catchment system and bolt that on. And those incremental improvements they help, and you know, they create sure. comfort. Uh, but it's not exactly um, a big enough step to really start to push the needle on what's possible. And so when you take a look at how houses are currently constructed, you know, you've got your architect, maybe, right. um, and you've got um, your subcontractors, um, you know, stone workers, uh, stone masons, um, you know, roofers, um, all the different paint, right, uh, insulation, right. all of those different yeah. things. And so you've got this coordinated effort that takes place between 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 people sometimes. Right. Um, and there's a lot of hair on that process. And everybody in the process cares a lot about their specific piece of the job. Uh, but because it's not delivered in such a succinct way, um, it creates friction. Um, so if you're the builder or you're the home purchaser, you want a succinct process that you can kind of move sequentially right. through A, B, and yeah, C. Yeah. It makes sense. And so our developers are thinking really hard about the pain points in that process and creating a streamlined way for individuals to say, this is what I want in a house and this is how I get it. Um, right. And so our, our platform is going to be vertically integrated to allow all the tools necessary for your architect, for your builder, for your structural engineer, and ultimately for your end user, that home buyer, or your, your master plan community right. kind of developer, um, to have all the information that they need in one place uh, to allow for a really streamlined process that's pain-free. So you can go from concept to built structure right, right. In, in one location. I mean, I think that's absolutely amazing to actually build, you know, bring all of those people into one platform because you're right. That is not traditionally how it's done. Traditionally, they're not even talking a lot of times when you have architects and builders, you know, developers a lot of time have their own architects. Yeah, maybe you have that one kickoff meeting yeah. and everybody's there right. one time and then it's a series of change orders and you yeah. sign this piece of paper and you, you agree with this change and it comes That's back right. to someone. So we're really trying to take the pain out of that. And as someone who's built a home and as someone who aspires to build many others, um, we would like that, that process yeah. to be as easy as possible for everyone. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's amazing that you guys are able to do that and take it all the way from the, from the front end to the back end. I mean, that's that's the technology, right? So you're, you're all the way at the front end, whoever the consumer is, all the way to the end consumer through manufacturing in the middle. And I think those uh, those processes are, are becoming more and more prevalent of a need in our industry Absolutely. In, a, in a big way. So, all right, so here we designed, we designed a product, we're going through the system, now it's let, let's build this product. Tell, tell me, what is the process there? How many people does it take? You know, how, how do you lay it all out to get going? Yeah, so um, actually the house that uh, you're, you're sitting in front of right now, yeah. um, we built this with a, with a team of about six or seven, um, and this was a, a year and a half ago. Right. Um, right now, today, we could build this same house with a team of four. Um, and so effectively, the Icon technology shows right. up. Um, we, we, we pull up on a flatbed, 40-foot trailer, and we roll uh, the Vulcan system off of that trailer. Um, we bolt it to the existing foundation. Um, we set up the magma or the material delivery system. Right. Um, we, we power it, and we, we add water, and so you get a, a, a water right. silo right. off to the side. Um, and then we press play. And um, all of the preloaded designs for this unit um, we'll, we will begin. Um, we'll mix the concrete, uh, it'll travel uh, in our hose system uh, to the foundation and we will build right. this structure layer by layer um, until it's complete. And so um, it's, it's as simple as understanding how to use the tablet um, in order to, to deliver a structure like the one that you're sitting in front of. So Dimitri, why don't you tell me a little bit about this unit right here? You know, what was the start to finish time on, on something like this? Yeah, so the Community First Village Welcome Center that we're sitting in front of right now um, was about 24 hours of print time. So that's spread across a few days, obviously. We don't want to be working into the, the yeah. evening hours, keeping the rest of the community up, but about 24 hours in, in consecutive print for the wall system. Right. Um, and then the completely delivered structure was delivered in, a, in about a month's time. Wow. So mean, that's roof, windows, everything. MEP paint, etc. Yeah. Well, let's get into the process. So you mentioned the Vulcan delivery system, right? That is the 3D printing system that you come and set up and actually does these, you know, it looks like about a one inch bead that's, that it lays around the house. You've got a good eye. Yeah. So I, I think, I mean, with that said, so you set it up, the, that system comes in, and then you mentioned the, it's like a mixing system that comes in that the feeds system. the Vulcan, right? The magnets. 
Tell us a little bit about how that system works. Yeah, so the material delivery system is actually the, the, the crown jewel, we think. Um, it, does, it does all the, the calculations for right. the, the material weight, the amount of water that needs to get added, uh, the viscosity of the material, all of those things, it kind of takes care of that and makes that yeah. an automated process. So you don't necessarily have to be a concrete guru or you know have a background in rheology. All you need to know is uh, how to read the tablet and understand right. kind of what your parameters are. You, it can make some adjustments based on humidity and overall uh, exterior temperature, but right. the, the goal of that ma material delivery system is to make the mixing process as simple as possible yeah. so we can boot, scoot, and boogie over here as far as the house is concerned. Boot, scoot, and boogie. We are in Texas. I love that. <laughs> One of my favorite songs, by the way. Hey, so, all right, so here we have the system. It's laying out the walls. How do you know when to lay headers? You know, walk, walk somebody through that's really trying to understand how, how do I use this? How do my trades use this, right? That's looking at the system. How do I know when to put a header in for a door? Yeah, that's absolutely um, how we've been thinking about the technology. Uh, for the first year and a half of its life, it only spent its time in our hands. Um, and our developers are doing a fantastic job in thinking about what the use case is for other individuals. And yeah. so um, we've built in kind of parameters around using the system um, that make it really easy to know when header placement or things of that nature are supposed to take place. So you'll actually get a physical screen readout um, how many layers until your, your header placement or how many layers until a door jam needs to be right. placed and things of that nature to ensure um, that you don't mess up your print. Yeah. Um, and it, down to the have you understood what I'm telling you prompt um, with a smiley face on the screen, right. yes or no, or I need to pause, or I need further instruction on what's happening, um, and it'll actually give you those pop-ups. And so it is as simple as kind of understanding how to, how to read the tablet um, and making your, your course adjustments from there. Right. Now, I'm going to hit on something on this because this is so important, especially with the you know trade labor issues that we're having today. And I mean, this is technology that young people can can learn and use. I mean, this is a whole nother job description, building a house with a tablet. Absolutely. No, yeah. it, it, it's crazy to think. Um, I think one of the things that we want all of the uh, the, con the construction builders and the master plan developers to understand is yeah. we're designing this technology primarily for them as our end user. Um, we want to create something that is simple enough to use. Think elegant and, and easy to use like your iPhone. Right, you don't necessarily right. need to know the back end engineering on why that thing works. You just yeah. need to know that it works when you pick it up to use it. And so we want to make this accessible and user, uh, user friendly to the entire workforce that currently exists sure. uh, to create a seamless integration of the current built environment and the one that we're pushing towards. Right, right. Um, so the concrete. I saw a picture years ago in the first the first project that, that Icon did, and it, it did not look like this. That's right. I mean, it was amazing. So how far you've come, and you're developing this system, and the concrete's proprietary to you know the Magnum system. Is that correct? Yeah. So the concrete is proprietary, but the great thing about how we use it is most of the materials can be locally sourced, uh, right. no matter where you're at. So if you're hailing from Western PA or you live right here in Central Texas, right. um, the vast majority of the ingredients that are in that mix can be locally sourced. Um, we have made a great deal of strides when it comes to the material science on the back end of making it you know strong enough to stand up on its own and rigid enough to take that next layer's worth yeah. of weight um, and also the cure times are incredibly important because as you know um, yeah. it, concrete is a, is a finicky beast and right, it, right. it, it kind of likes the temperatures that we like and so you get too hot um, and it starts to dry too fast and you start to deal with cracking you get too cold um, and you don't go through the, the proper cure cycle and so um, it is finicky but uh, we love it and we are actively working to make it work for us not against us. Yeah and I think I think I saw it's 6,000 psi is that 6, accurate? 6,000 psi yes, yeah sir. so 6,000 psi so that means it's 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 watertight that's right right I think anything over 5,000 if I'm if I know my concrete you're doing you're doing pretty good yeah, yeah, yeah. and so what you're gonna get is a, a contiguous uh, exterior envelope uh, right. that's gonna have a really hefty thermal mass wow. um, but then the capillary wicking is left to a minimum. Yes, I love it. I, I love you. it. I got a book, man. I'm ready. I'm ready for this. This is the coolest stuff ever. So, all right. So, so moving on, you mentioned, you know, uh, working with developers and so forth moving forward. You know, let's talk about how, how this eases what they have to do and how this fits into to that whole community. Yeah. And so when you think about the primary drivers that uh, are kind of limiting factors with development, right? You, you talked about the labor, uh, the labor shortages that right. exist in all the major trade areas. Um, you've got the cost of materials, right? We're all kind of dealing with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got the regulatory bodies that kind of make things what they are in your area. Right. And so right. city, state, local, municipality level, like trying to figure out a way to best build your homes that meet the standard in your area. Right. And so um, we feel uh, that this technology, when put in the hands of developers, uh, can work directly with the labor force that currently exists. Um, so this is an additional trade that you can teach on top of uh, right. the things that already exist. And so um, it's not limiting in any way with the current workforce that we have. 
Um, it limits the cost of additional materials needed because it's concrete, you know, readily sure. accessible everywhere yeah. in the world. Um, and then you've got uh, cost, right. which we can drive down by continuing to be able to build multiple structures at one time with the exact same labor force and limiting the amount of dangerous exchanges that kind of take place on a job site. So sure. if I can build it with less people, the same people, and faster with less materials, um, that's a winning proposition for developers and for builders and for right, trades right, folks right. because uh, they can get out and the more jobs they can get to, the more opportunity to make money. So. Right, and there's the economy of scale of you know moving the machine one house to another to another on, on these developments. So you know economically, can we talk about that a little bit? Like, what what are the economic values to, to this type of thing? Yeah, so you really nailed it when it comes to um, thinking about the economies of scale here. So this is one singular structure that we printed with the Vulcan, um, but a thousand meters away, we've got six structures that we printed with one Vulcan in, in one fell swoop. And so scaling really starts to make sense when you're thinking about, you know. Uh, green space building yeah. um, that you can you know have a fleet of one two or three printers and they can print multiple structures with that same set of crew that we were talking about um, and that that scale really starts to work in your favor yeah. um, when you start to think about building 10 20 30 50 sure. 100 buildings at a time yeah. and that's really what we're chasing down. absolutely I mean you end up with the skilled labor force so and with the skilled labor force you just have the efficiency getting better and better each time they do it that's absolutely uh, for, right for the project so I could I could see that all right so let's, let's so scaling, let's talk about scaling. Why don't you tell everybody, you know, what you guys are doing now with uh, NASA, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, very casual NASA. Yeah, um, we've had the opportunity um, to work with uh, some some large DOD partners, NASA yeah. of which is uh, is the most current. Um, they just announced, um, in conjunction with us, um, big architecture uh, in search. Uh, Project Olympus, where we're going to be uh, building permanent structures on the right. moon for astronauts and uh, future use cases. And so uh, we believe that this technology isn't limited to just um, terrestrial building. Um, once we've right. figured this out, uh, there are multiple efficiencies that can be gained both here and in extraterrestrial environments. Sure. So what I think is really interesting is, I mean, I mean, you now have a scientific lab, is that correct? Yes, sir. Working through some of these things and um, lunar soil. Right, is one of the things I was reading and were, they, were, they were talking about. And, and how do you take what you have and use another planet's ingredients, so to speak, to do this and be very efficient without having to take all that material with you? Is that, is that what you're looking at? Yeah, so I'm not a material scientist. I'm gonna give you my real quick Bill Nye understanding of this, but uh, effectively what you're dealing with yeah. is um, uh, you've got two, a two-fold problem. Uh, you can't bear the weight of the concrete into space. So traveling with the material becomes an issue. Sure. So you have to use locally sourced material again. Right. Um, so you're using uh, Highlands lunar dust. Um, and then you have all of the uh, atmospheric challenges there. So you've got right. you know, lack of gravity and things of that nature. Right. So effectively, you have to be able to gather that material heat it to the point where it actually turns into a lava type material yeah. and then place it at that heat so it cools and stays in that location and then effectively build on top of that structure. And so yeah, that's absolutely right. what we're in a zero to gravity do. environment. Yeah, in a zero <laughs> gravity environment, we are looking to laser center that material and uh, that's going to be one of the more fun challenges yeah. of, the, of the coming years. I mean, that, that that's that's so huge. And you know the funny part was what, you know, doing a little bit of research. That's always been a vision for Icon from what I was saying, you know, like taking it to the next level and that's really to the next level oh uh, this is a dream come true i know for our ceo yeah, and for, for sure. me a kid that went to space camp out cape canaveral like I, I am i am ecstatic at the opportunity to work closely with nasa sure. on this project well, i love it all right here's what we're going to ask we're going to we're going to wrap this up but i really want to understand from icons you know what do you see with housing over the next you know three five ten years and how does 3d printing fit into that in, in your vision well, sadly, what I think we're going to see in housing over the next three to five to 10 years is the same thing that we've been seeing over the course of the last 50 years, is housing becoming more and more inaccessible to individuals um, across the country. Yeah. Um, whether that be you know, first time home buyers, um, individuals in the middle market or uh, at either end of, of the spectrum, um, what you're dealing with is fewer and fewer people that have access to, to the American dream, which effectively is the home. Right. Um, and we believe that this technology has the opportunity to put home buying squarely in everyone's crosshairs and have the opportunity to purchase their, their home. Um, and we believe we can do that with efficiencies that will help us drive down not only the cost of housing, uh, right. but also creates numerous different layouts that are conducive uh, to the type of living and the type of thriving that we would like consumers to experience. 
You know, well, I saw one of your mottos you know, is uh, affordable, attainable. Is that what it was, right? Affordable, sustainable, okay. and available. That's that's correct. Affordable, sustainable. And yeah, available. we want to build yeah. resilient, sustainable, beautiful housing in every opportunity right. that we can, and we believe this technology is going to lead straight to that. Well, you guys are off to a good start. So. Well, we I appreciate like. it, and thank you so much for taking the time. Um, yeah, is there anything else that? that no, you I mean, I, th I think we covered everything. So, listen, everyone, we're in Austin, Texas, and I am sitting with Dimitri Julius, and who is the VP of Operations at Icon 3D Printing, and they are going to space even. So, this is a lot of fun. We are with the Housing Innovation Alliance, where we bring you innovative things all the time. I'm Dave Cooper. Thanks for watching.